Hi everyone and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for Free with Miss Estrick. In this video we're going through the nutrient cycle, the phosphorus cycle. So the first thing to think about then is what is phosphorus used for in organisms to therefore help to understand why this cycle is so important. So if we think back to the biological molecules unit, phosphorus is found in DNA and RNA, it's a phosphate ion. Same as in ATP, phosphate ion, and then phospholipid bilayer has a phosphate group attached to it. So those are four essential molecules for life, which is why the phosphorus cycle is really, really important. So the phosphorus cycle is different to the carbon and the nitrogen cycle, even though carbon cycle is not on the A-level spec, but the nitrogen is. The key difference is you don't get phosphorus as a gas in the atmosphere. So instead, the main um, source or store even is as phosphate ions, normally in rocks. So it's the mineral form in rocks. So we won't have a stage in this cycle where it's a gas in the atmosphere. Now, within the spec as well, you need to be aware that for nutrient cycles, mycorrhizae are really, really important. So we'll just go through what mycorrhizae are. So they're fungi, which you find locked around certain plant roots. And it's really beneficial because both the fungus provides an advantage to the plant and the plant provides an advantage to the fungus. So the reason then they're beneficial is this fungi, so you can see all of these branches of the mycorrhizae fungi, that helps the roots to reach a much larger surface area for water absorption. And the fungus acts like a sponge, so it can absorb and hold lots of water and the mineral ions dissolved in that water. So it helps make plants uh, more drought resistant. So if there isn't rain for ages, if they have mycorrhizae um, fungal associations, they're more likely to survive. Now, in return, the plants, because it's photosynthesizing, it can provide carbohydrates to the fungus. So it is a mutualistic relationship, meaning both parties provide an advantage. So next then, we'll go through the phosphorus cycle. So we'll start in the middle where we're looking at phosphate ions which are dissolved in either water, so oceans, rivers, ponds, or it could be in the water amongst the soil as well. And we're going to be looking at the first stage, so plants absorbing these phosphate ions by active transport. And then the plants containing those phosphate ions will incorporate it into DNA, into phospholipids, and animals which eat the plant material will then digest that material, absorb and then incorporate the phosphate ions into their biological molecules. Now after that, there's two different arrows, but they're very similar processes. So some excretion will contain phosphate ions and some of that excretion could be going directly into the um, oceans again. So water going into oceans, rivers or soil. Uh, and then we've also got another arrow here, excretion and decomposition. So decomposition would be after the animal dies, we can have breakdown of that material. The excretion part is specifically linked to guano. And that's what we can see in this photo here. So the phosphate ions from waste and from animal remains will contain um, the phosphate ions. The guano, this is produced by birds and it's this white material here. So that is in their excretion and it's really, really rich in phosphorus. As are the shells and bones of animals. So that is then the source from excretion and waste. Now, over time, those will both erode, break down, and then it will release the phosphate ions back into the oceans, rivers, and soil. Some of it, though, will go towards creating phosphate ions in rocks, particularly this guano. Over time, we have this de deposition, which is when it does start to deposit and form phosphate ions in the rocks. Those rocks can then be eroded and it returns the phosphate ions back into the oceans and soil, but also the additional fertilizers to land, um, you can have runoff into the oceans. 
The only other arrow that we haven't gone through is the sedimentation. And this is another way that we create rocks. So the sediment coming from the oceans and rivers, as that builds up, it creates rocks over thousands of years, and that will contain the phosphate ions. So that is it for the phosphorus cycle. Hope you have found that helpful. That's, that's the final nutrient cycle video. Um, if you have found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and click subscribe to keep up to date on all the videos I'll be uploading.